Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Klaus and Q Show here on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day to give this a watch. I'm Jason Klaus. I'm being joined by my partner in this particular endeavor, Quad L. Edwards. And uh, Q, number one, listen, <laughs> um, we're going to start off light this week because I feel like if we come out of the gate uh, with our main topic, um, it's just going to set the tone for the whole show. Right. Uh, so before we get in into what we're really here to talk about, like I said, we're going to start things off a little light because generally speaking, we will end our shows with a little bit of wrestling talk because apparently the banter between Q and I resonates with some of you who tune in to find out our particular uh, thoughts, opinions, you know, all about professional wrestling. And I feel like... It, with the topic that we are going to 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 uh, have in our main event slot, if you will, um, it's probably a good idea if we do get you know some chuckles in while while we can. Because Absolutely. I, I'm going to be straight up with you. This is the show that has the censors nervous this week. Okay, um, I'm going to do I, I'm going to do the very best that I can to maintain my composure, my professionalism, but this is going to be a very, very personally charged uh, topic. Now, before we get into that, how are you? How's the family? How's things in, in your neck of the woods? And you know what? I can't complain, man. What's going on, everybody? Uh, you know, life is life. Ups and downs, you know, it just go along for the ride sometime. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to keep on riding until the wheels fall off. Hopefully, I go off with the wheels, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Now, um, Q, we when we went off the air uh, last month here on ONTV, we we were talking about and kind of previewing um, the upcoming pay per views for WWE, specifically the storyline with Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn and the whole bloodline thing. Um, Elimination Chamber has happened and has now yes, set, has. set the road to WrestleMania, which is, of course, the two-night extravaganza of the first weekend of April. Um, I'm going to tell you something, bro. I've been watching wrestling for a long time. <laughs> I have seen a lot of guys come and go. I've seen a lot of matchups, you know, legendary rivalries. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, WWE could not have put on a better pay-per-view event than they did with the the Elimination Chamber. From top to bottom, the matches were good, but it all came down to what the whole show was built around Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. And dude, it, the fact that it was in Montreal, right? It would they had right. lightning in a bottle. Oh, yeah. It was the perfect storm, and it and it is it will be one of those. One of those matches that you will go back and watch years from now just for the very emotions of it. Both guys nailed it, right? Oh, absolutely. I, you, it's hard to say that that is not the hottest story that's in all of the business. Uh, all of the business, probably in the last few, probably in the last decade. I would almost. say so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just the storytelling and not only just the story that's playing out, the guys that are in the story that's putting on the work. I mean, the, the character work with Sami Zayn, and, and I know a lot of people are not, you know, the biggest fans of Roman Reigns, but man, he's been putting on some character work. I mean, some awesome character work. And then the whole Jay Uso, and even, you know, even Jimmy Uso being, you yeah. know, just the side characters. Uh, so much that they put into this puzzle, and it all fits. And I'm telling you, the crowd is eating it up. I said it on the night of, I'll say it here, um, wrestling is good when it's done right, and it couldn't have been on any better display than it was at the elimina Elimination Chamber, and it was in Sami Zayn's hometown. Um, I think that's what really added to the emotion of it, yeah. just the, the reception that he got there. And I'll be honest, I'm one of those guys. I didn't think much of Sami Zayn when he <laughs> was in NXT. And it wasn't until the whole bloodline thing that I was like, wow, this guy has something when properly motivated. And, um, man, I, I don't know if he has it in him to maintain his status as a top star or a main event player, but... Even if this was his one and done, man, like he capitalized on it, he maximized his minutes, and now what's happened 
is WWE has really put themselves up <laughs> against the corner because they're going to be hard pressed to f figure out a way to make something at WrestleMania register the way that it did at the Elimination Chamber. Absolutely. It's really with the story. You have to keep that story hot. And I, and I already feel like, you know, a lot has been blown already. You know, we had the angle at the Royal Rumble, which was, to me, one of the greatest end-of-the-night angles you, can, you, you will ever see. And then, you know, the, the, everything that happened at the Elimination Chamber. Now you have to capitalize because the biggest show is coming up. So there's got to be something big for Sami Zayn. And, uh, you know, Kevin Owens got to be a part of that. Yeah. He's got to be a part of that. On, and, and this is going to be really for the diehards that know the friendship between the two guys that go way back to the, to the uh, independents. Uh, but, man, something between them two. You know, we, see, we see them in the ring a million times. But, man. There's real life chemistry between those real two. Real life and it's, chemistry. It's on full display. Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel like, you know, then you got to enter the whole Cody Rhodes thing into it. And I'm like, I'm going to ruffle feathers. I'm going to ruffle <laughs> a lot of feathers this week, to be honest with you. So why wait? Let's just start here. I'll Let's just, start ruffling. I'll just piss off the, the, the wrestling fans first. Cody Rhodes is in the not. He is not in the place that he, he needs to be. He does not deserve to be in the main event of WrestleMania against Roman Reigns. And if the things are progressing the way that they're rumored to be, th this is going to be bad. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to say it. He's not the guy. Um, if they if they were going to pull if they were if they were going to do the switch, it should have happened at the elimination chamber when they had that perfect storm, they blew that opportunity. Yeah. So like you said, they're going to have to figure figure something out to make Mania that much better. I really feel like at this point, if I'm speculating here, you're you're going to wind up seeing the Usos against uh, Zayn and Kevin Owens yep. for the tag team titles, which isn't a bad thing because that actually puts the spotlight on the tag team championship, and it hasn't had that right in 20 years. Yeah. It's been a, an afterthought. Well, now with the way that all this has splintered and materialized, and it all boils down to that that bloodline base. Yeah, um, it really that's what elevates not just the guys that are involved at this point; it's the championships. Yep. And like for the first time in a long time, I find myself if this is what, where they go with it. This is the first time I've been excited about a tag team championship match since probably Strike Force and Demolition. Yeah. Okay, because I knew Demolition was winning, and I was excited about that. Um, but be that as it may, I mean that's that's kind of my point of view on all this. I mean, we could sit here for the that. for the whole show yeah. and talk about uh, you know professional wrestling and rolling up to WrestleMania. And full disclosure, that was kind of our plan. Uh, we were going to tackle a topic here tonight, and then during our March th 31st, which is the Friday of WrestleMania weekend, Ooh. we were going to dedicate the entire hour previewing the matches that they had announced for WrestleMania. Well, as they say in the wrestling business, and I have incorporated into real life, <laughs> cards subject to change. That's right. Okay. Um, we are calling an audible here, and it was literally yesterday that I had enough time to process a number of different things uh, to the point to where it inspired what we're doing here tonight. Now, ordinarily, I would go on my podcast and spend however long just talking about whatever is on my mind. But this is something different. Not only am I going to talk about it on the podcast, and I will as only I can, because with the podcast, I am unfiltered. Here, I got to be a little bit more reserved, but it, that does not mean it diminishes my passion for what we're fixing to talk about. And because of the, the whole gravity of the whole thing, this is going to become a two-part uh, topic. We will start here tonight. We will lay the groundwork here tonight. And then next month, March the 31st, mark your calendars right now. March the 31st at 6 p.m., where you are watching this right now, you are going to see probably one of the most emotional interviews that has ever taken place within the hallowed halls of this studio. And I can say that wholeheartedly. 
Now, Q, before I open the proverbial Pandora's box, because it's coming, is there anything that you want to tie in, you know, tie a bow on the wrestling aspect or anything you would like to say? Because you, like, you know what the topic is. We haven't really come out and said, okay, this is what we're talking about. Right. Um, is there anything you want to say as a precursor before I really uh, just open the floodgates? <laughs> to put a bow on the, 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 the wrestling side, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, end with saying the Elimination Chamber was the greatest show that uh, Triple H has produced. Agreed. And uh, the, the men's chamber match was probably one of the best ones I've seen. Agreed. Uh, and the storytelling is the best storytelling I've seen in 10 years. And the whole ruffled feathers. I'm going to unruffle a, just a couple of them. Oh, here we go. And, uh, and just say that Cody Rhodes is a temporary top guy for me. And what I mean by that is he's going to get his big due because of the whole story with his dad and everything uh, at WrestleMania. And I believe that. But as a top face, he will not hold that spot. And I believe that there's another guy that can get another chance to take that title off of him. And don't say Brock Lesnar. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Brock Lesnar, he's, he's, he's doing a bunch of low blows now. So, you know, he's doing a whole, <laughs> he's doing a whole different thing now. Uh, and plus, he has an even bigger challenge at WrestleMania. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say... You know, for those who don't know, they did announce that SummerSlam is coming to Detroit. Yes. This is for all my Detroit people. Um, and that right there could be the catalyst to really get that title on Sami Zayn. We, uh, we want to talk about something very serious tonight. You know, we had our 10, 15 minutes of you know, banter back and forth to get a chuckle or two, but make absolute no mistake about it. Um, I should say as a precursor, the, you know, my, the thoughts and opinions and commentary that come from me are of me. They in no way represent the, the beliefs, the views or the philosophies of Orion Neighborhood Television, my partner, Claudel Edwards, or anybody that is affiliated uh, with the production of this show. These are my, and it's because I take a very personal vested interest in this particular topic. We have a very serious problem in our country, very serious. And while the format of this show generally is to look at the silver lining in life or to try to figure out a way to maximize our minutes in the best way that we possibly can, we cannot ignore the facts. We cannot in, you know, ignore what is happening on the streets in this, particular, in this particular case, in classrooms, in schools. Now, you don't have to look very far into the past to pinpoint a situation where some degree of violence has been handed out at an educational institution. Most recently, it happened on the campus of Michigan State University in East Lansing. Okay, now, that's bad. Make no mistake about it. But it doesn't stay regulated to a college campus. Here in this area, you don't have to look any further back than November of 2021. Just, I short drive down M24 and you're going to run into the town of Oxford. Oxford, Michigan has been very much in the news in the last year and a half or so. And it's for the wrong reasons. You can go beyond that and you can pinpoint all the all of these. It doesn't matter what state we're talking about. It doesn't matter what time of year we're talking about. At this point, it doesn't matter what year we're talking about. We have a very serious issue. And a lot of it ultimately results in violence in, in the classrooms, in the hallways of these schools. When does it stop? When do we get a grasp on what is happening here? 
Now, generally speaking, you know, when all of this really became a national thing, like it finally became a national story, it happened at a high school in Columbine, in Colorado. That was 1999. I remember that day very vividly because I couldn't imagine the horror that those students were feeling as two other people, their classmates, rummaging through the hallways with weapons and just mowing these people down. And for what? That was 1999. We are now just about through the second month of this year. And do you realize that at this point, in February of 2023, there have been some degree of a mass shooting, enough of them, that can fill, if you took one, it would fill the entire calendar of 2023. Are you serious? What are we being, what's being done? It's thoughts and prayers. That's the first one, right? That's, that's what, it, what everybody goes to. I said my thoughts and prayers. Look, I get it. That's important. I'm not dismissing that. But if we're going to call it for what it is, it simply is not enough. Now, I have registered that this is a problem, like in, internally. I have kids in public schools. So obviously this is going to be something I'm going to take a very serious interest in because, my God, I don't know what I would do if something like this unfolded at one of my kids' schools. If something was carried out like this. It got too close to home for me this week. Too close. I'm coming on here tonight and Q, I'll give you your, your, your moment here, and you can agree with me, you can argue with me, and I don't care. We will have a conversation because we're adults. That's right. And even if, if we don't agree, we can still have an adult conversation yep. about this. But here's the bottom line. Everybody wa wants to pinpoint fingers of blame. Like somebody has to be held responsible. Now, there's a number of different aspects that can be taken into consideration with something like this. I get it. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a point of view. A lot of times, their points of view and their opinions are dictated by what side of the political aisle that they support. I've got news for you. This is not a political issue. This is a humanitarian issue. And when you have six-year-old kids that cannot go to school because they're scared for their lives, something's got to be done. You want to point fingers of blame. You want to have people responsible for this. Here's where it starts. Aside from looking at the way that said child may be brought up, what kind of home environment that they're in, that's a complete, that's, you take that off to the side because that is a big piece of this. But we're talking about school. We're talking about educational ed, um, institutions that we send our children to, not just to get an education, but for them to be safe and protected. And when you've got six-year-olds that can't feel safe to go to school, there is a failure with the administrators. There is a failure in these people that we trust with the safety and the well-being of our children. When they cannot demonstrate proper leadership and the proper right thing to, you know, to do and to handle these types of situations, something has to be done. And sweeping it under the rug is no longer acceptable. In fact, I'm fixing to blow the top off all of it because I am sick and tired of innocent children either being mowed down or bare minimum having the paralyzing fear to go into a school not knowing if they're going to be safe or not. 
You talk about that aspect, Hugh, I feel like there is a complete and total breakdown of the administrators that are in charge of these buildings. The principals, the counselors, the teachers, the ones who, who have information and they don't want any kind of negative impact or publicity or whatever. They don't want to have to deal with it, so they're going to try to sweep it under the rug as a, we're taking care of it. No, you're not. You're not taking care of it because it's still happening. What do you think about this? I need to catch my breath. <laughs> I think the, the, the sad dynamic of this whole situation is the fact that I can go to an airport and feel more protected than the kids can go to school and feel more protected. You know, it's, 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 it's crazy what money does. It's almost seemed like there's an issue with people uh, doing what they're supposed to do because of other issues, just like you were saying. They place the blame on this. We can't do this because we don't, we don't have this. Or we can't do this because, because we can't do that. You know, and it's, it's, it's too many can'ts out there. And while you have all, this, all of these administrations talking about what they can't do, a lot of lives are being lost. And, uh, and, and, and it's sad because when can we get to the action part to where we can do something? You know, what, what's the next step then? What issue do we tackle first? Because now it seems like it's just a bunch of confusion. But really, there's a lot of stuff internally going on that we might not even know that don't make sense, really. Because a lot of these people that are in these positions, oh, they're going to protect themselves. They're going to protect themselves and they're going to protect their, the image. <clears throat> just like you were just saying, uh, they don't want to get the blame. They don't want the bad publicity and all of this stuff. But naturally, from parents and the people that are watching all the stuff that's unfolding, you're gonna get that bad publicity from us. And now you're, you've, you're, you're losing trust. You're yeah. losing trust. And, I, and for me, I don't, I don't wanna have to wake up every morning when I send my kids to school and wondering if they're gonna make it back home. And, 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 you know, I have five and it's just, it's, it's, it's a scary feeling for a parent. Now imagine being at an age where you really don't even understand all the stuff that's going on in, in the school. They have fear over something they don't understand. Why are people bringing kids and people bringing guns and knives and all of these weapons in the school? Why is there so much anger in school, why are there so many disgruntled? Even the teachers are disgruntled. You have underpaid teachers. You have uh, you 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 don't have protection in the schools. Where you don't have you got undercover cops that aren't trained to even be cops. Right. They don't have the training to even protect the kids. So there's so many things that's going on that our kids are not going to understand because all we can do is tell them to go to school. You don't have to be scared. That's all I can do is comfort my kids because I don't know what's going on in the administration. They're not telling us. Right. That's a huge problem is this lack of transparency. Now, one thing that you just said that really registers with me is um, the word can't. We can't do this or we can't do that. What the hell is can't? Can't either means you won't or you don't know how. That's what can't is. You do know how. You do know what has to happen. The problem is, is you lack the backbone to do it because you know it's going to cause some degree of resistance. There's going to be one side or the other that's not going to agree with your, your, your philosophies. But then that's when you start compromising the safety of, of the kids, your kids. The one, you know, you're so, you know, up in arms and bent out of shape about you know, your privacy is being invaded if we decide we're going to install metal detectors at the front doors of the schools. Why is that a bad thing? 
that is a layer of protection for your kids. Assuming you care about your kids, and I would imagine that you do on some degree. You, the topic of metal detectors has been brought up for a long time, and for whatever reason, it gets dismissed, gets debunked. And a common um, argument to that is, well, it invades my child's privacy. What, what in the hell what is privacy? your kid taking into school that you don't want anybody else to know about? That's the problem. If it's setting off a metal detector, chances are, especially on an, el on an elementary level, or even junior high at this point, if it's setting off a, me a metal detector, it probably shouldn't be in the damn building to begin with. Can we apply some common sense here? It ain't all about you, Jack. It's about all of us. And at some point, two opposing sides are going to have to find some degree of common ground. You got to establish a foundation on which to build upon. That foundation should be, correct me if I'm wrong here, because I know when I, when I go off on, 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 on my rants, on my tangents, like I may miss certain elements. I, I may skip over a, a, a thing. That's what I'm here for. I, I know. <laughs> I know you are. But I feel like at this point, the basic foundation to curb all of this, to find a solution, is to keep our children safe. Why is that so difficult? Why is that even questioned? Who cares what your personal philosophy is? Because it's all about gun control. That's what they immediately jump to. Well, they're trying to take our guns. No one's saying that. No one's saying that. What we're saying is there needs to be some, some layer of protection to protect your kids from getting access to these things and protection from the other kids that are in the school in case one does get a hold of one, however, because it just miraculously happens, right? Because when these things happen and the, and the parents are questioned, all of a sudden nobody knows how it happened. But the kids got it. And it came from your house. They found out some way or another accountability or their lack of is another piece of this. Now, I know right now where I'm focusing a lot on school administration because, well, this is where the majority of these things are happening at. They're happening at schools. Privately, publicly, doesn't really matter. But the fundamentals of, key, of keeping our children safe and implementing improved actions, programs, protocol, to keep these innocent lives safe, under no circumstances, should be compromised. Here's my take on it. There needs to be representatives from all parties, all opposing parties, whatever the case may be. You want to get a school administrator on board, that's cool. You want to get a handful of parents, great. You want to get a representative of the NRA to come in, wonderful, whatever. Whatever you feel are, are the key components and bring a certain entity, certainly if we're rational adults, we could come up with a solution. Because at the end of the day, it's all about keeping our children safe. If you take any layer of that and you compromise that, not only have you put a crack in that foundation that... <laughs> It's just a matter of time before the whole thing is built upon, it comes, it comes crumbling down. It happens, and it will. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are you doing? And why is your stance so important that it's worth, worst case, the life of an innocent child? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. No, it's not worth it at all. Yeah, I feel like there's a there's a whole underlying lining situation, and I don't I don't want to go too left field on this part, but 
why and uh, and uh, and I'm not I'm not politically correct, so uh, sometimes I might just say whatever I want to say. Uh, but why in the ghetto do we have metal detectors in schools where they feel like these kids are out of whack? But then you have a lot of these other schools who are higher class where the problems are really happening. happening. Yeah. There's nothing there. It's part of the image, Q. Yep. It's part of it's part of the image because they feel like, oh, well, if students come into parents come into the district and they're taking a tour of the school and they see that there's metal detectors at the door. They automatically assume, oh, this is a bad school. You know, there's riffraff. There's oh, I'm yep. trying to really try. I'm Joe <laughs> Bro. I'm trying really hard, maintain my my language on a PG level here. Really, please know that I, I am. Um, but it's not about that image. T- to me, if I saw that, and I'm looking around at the surrounding neighborhoods and the towns, you go, you drive through Oxford. You drive through the the Lake Orion area. This is some of the most peaceful places in this part of Michigan that you will find. Everything's charmed. There's a there's a there's not that overall heaviness of of despair in these communities. Right. These right. are family oriented. Really good areas. Very good areas. Yeah. Schools are good. You know things are, you know seemingly. Running on all cylinders. My kids are in this this area. Go to school. So in this you area. know firsthand yep. how good the schools are. So, but I'm my point is, if I'm bringing my family from like the Flint area to we found somewhere down here, Lake Orion, Auburn Hills, doesn't really matter. And we tour the school that our kids are going to be going to, and I see a metal detector there. My my thought is, wow. These people get it. These people are are invested in the safety of my child to the point to where they have installed these metal detectors as a layer of defense. Right. And like that speaks volumes to me. Now, if I'm run, if I'm rolling through a neighborhood looking at schools and the neighborhood that surrounds it ain't all that great, well then I may have uh, may have other questions because you hate to be that way, man, but right. like it is what it is. Yeah. We I don't write the script. I'm just reading it as it's prepared. Other people write that script. That's the story that they want to put out there. That's another topic for another day. <laughs> um but I mean, Q, there's got to be there's got to be open lines of communication. There's got to be some sort of resolution Man, we need to restore some degree of accountability. Yes. We need to dis- we need to restore some degree of trust in the school administrators that we charge with taking care of our children right, because right, right now it's in complete shambles. Exactly. And I and I also believe that these Teachers and uh, uh, the, the people that work at these schools need to be taken care of as well, because uh, you know, uh, and I'm and I'm I'm friends with a few uh, teachers who, to be honest, don't really care for their jobs. They don't care. They don't. They don't feel safe. They don't feel safe, and they're underpaid. There's a lot of issues going on that's not being taken care of by the higher ups. There's a lot of issues that's going on in schools that even even the administrators are, uh, are dealing with. And that's where the higher ups, you know, the superintendents, you know, what, what are they really doing to take care of the whole belly of the school? You know, it's, 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 to me, it's an overall thing and it starts from up top. You know, what decisions are being made? Where's the funding going? Because there's always been some type of funding issue. Mm-hmm. How come we can't get the undercover cops in there? How come? Hall monitors got to be old guys that, sorry for the hall monitors that I do know, old guys that can't even lift their foot up to catch something that's going on. I mean, there's a lot of small, subtle issues that are going on in the school that's really causing big impacts that, that, you know, where kids are losing their lives, teachers are losing their lives. So much stuff is happening 
because of the higher ups not, you know, putting their foot down. Uh, that kind of brings us to another uh, another layer to this this particular topic. Before we get into it, let's go ahead and run a quick timeout here momentarily. And when we come back, we will um, kind of touch on appearance, perspective, because it all comes back to um, the failure of our school systems and the, the administrators that run these things. So stick around. More of the Klaus and Q show is right after this timeout. All in TV invites you to take part in our 10 week video production class. The class meets on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offers instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. Upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. The cost is $30 for Lake Orion residents, $60 for non-residents. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. The cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show live here on ON TV. We certainly appreciate you tuning in this week. Um, Jason Klaus, Quadell Edwards. Uh, Q. <laughs> Man. We've talked about a lot of things on this show in the year plus that we've been here as, as a team. Right. You know, yeah. the Klaus and Q Show. And. Um, I don't want to dismiss the fact that um, what we've talked about previously is diminished in any way because everything that we have spent time talking about is things that we generally are passionate about that we feel. Um, but this, this particular s situation is different. It's different because it affects me differently. And when I sit here and even like last night when I figured out like this was what we were going to talk about tonight, like I started going through a wide range of emotions. And to be quite honest with you, I probably am going to get a little bit more on the emotional side as we get, you know, towards the tail end of this thing as I put the bow on it that I've already kind of had rolling around my head. But before we get to that part, Q, let me ask you a question. And I like I like I value your opinion, even if it's not on the same page as mine. I value number one, I value you as a as a man. I value you as a friend. Um, I value you as a co host on a professional realm. Metal, metal detectors in school. Good idea or no? Uh, it's a start. I think we need metal detectors plus more. You know, uh, if we're talking about protection for our kids, we go all out for everything else. I mean, uh, why not go all out for our kids to be safe? And this is more than just Jason Klaus, Quadell Edwards, the Klaus and Q show co hosting a, a show. This is two fathers sitting here having a conversation. So if you think about it, you know, from the side of a father, you know, I want my kids to be, if you, this is, this is where I'm at on it. And I know it's, it's far, if you can get the secret service in there, I don't care. Whatever, it, whatever you have to do to protect my kids. Because think about it, when they're home, we're fathers. What do we do? We protect our kids by any means. So once they're out of our, our out of our presence, I still want 
those kids protected. And when they go to a professional place such as a school, I expect them to be protected. Not just educated, but protected. And they, I don't want my kids to have fear to go learn. What is wrong with America when our kids have to fear going to school? We're not doing this Zoom stuff no more. Mm -mm. We've been there, done that, that failed. I kind of feel like that may be where the trend is, because I mean, you look at things like Oxford, you look at not necessarily Michigan State, take nothing away from the tragedy that was that. Anytime anybody is needlessly killed, wounded by acts of violence like this, that is not to be de you know, dismissed or, or, or diminished at all. But we're talking about kids here, you know? We're talking about the future, our future, our generation yep. that is going to take over for us and lead this country. Under no circumstances, like I look back on my childhood, I don't know about yours, Q, but like I, at no point did I worry about being hurt if I went to school, being shot if I went to school. I never thought of it. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. You know, you go downtown, hang out with, with your buddies or whatever, Acts of violence is the last thing on your mind. Right. That's that's the generation that we grew up in. It ain't like that anymore. And it's 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 a shame that it's allowed. It's allowed to be a thing because of appearance and perception and lack of accountability, lack of determination, lack of leadership. Because if you are a school administrator, or you are some representation of a, for the lack of a better term, uh, powers that be, you have a obligation as part of your job to oversee every aspect of it and to be a leader especially in the worst of times because it, it's it's the easiest thing in the world to to accept the adulation of the media or some sort of special wonderful thing like everybody wants to take credit for that like right. you were responsible for this happening where in the hell are you when the bottom falls out and there's blood on your hands literally and figuratively you try to wash it off as fast as you can because you can't stand the fact that you may be looked down upon. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened. And it's no longer about you. Your, your thought process should not be on, oh my God, I'm in damage control now. No. Mm -hmm. Wrong focus. And that, Jack, is what tells me you are in the wrong position. And I know people who have gone this route. I've seen interviews. I can read. This is their. This is how they portray themselves. It's like they're the victims. No, you're a part of the problem because you have failed fundamentally. Your desire to be perceived as this safe haven means absolute nothing if you don't back, up, back it up with your actions and equipment. Funding, you mentioned, mm -hmm. comes in, into question. We don't have money for it. Well, I can guarantee you that if you look across the books that there is a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here that can be taken out of things that are not in the grand scheme of things a priority. That's it. And you can find the funding to protect these kids. Prioritize, not monetize. 
I gotta catch my breath, Q. <laughs> you you took the words right out of my my mouth with a uh, priority. That's what it is. That's what it's all about. So it's really it's what you want to put in the forefront, and that's what they're doing. So uh, it, the kid, these kids aren't being protected because you know guys don't want to do it. You just just you just don't want to do it. You know. So it's and I'm not saying that everybody's out there is is evil or you know they're bad, but as a group, you guys are failing. That's one thing that you are. You, you guys are failing, and we should not always be in hand washing mode. You know, there's 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 got to be a point to can we just take care of some issues before it happens? Like, why do we have to wait for something to happen to bring awareness to it? Why do we have to wait for uh, something trash, some tragedy to happen for you guys to even step in and try to act like you're doing something. I mean, it's, it's, it's too many lives being lost, and I, and I feel like enough, uh, somewhere enough gotta be enough, you know. When is enough enough? Because one life lo lost is too, is too much. It happens when it affects them personally, in a lot of cases. Yep. Their own kid, niece, nephew, something along these lines. Something, something that rattles them to their fundamental personal core. Mm -hmm. That's when people want to start doing something about it. I realize we only got like a little more than 10 minutes left on, on the show here. And like I said at the top of the show or at the beginning part of this show, this is going to be a two-part thing. Because next month, March the 31st, Q and I are going to have two guests here to, on, on, on the set with us. And you're going to hear two very different perspectives on this. One of which is one of the most personally charged conversations I have ever had with another human. And it is one that absolutely shattered my heart listening to it. Now that conversation happened a year ago and it still very much registers with me. But it wasn't until this week, self-admittedly, like, I, like, like I've said, we've had conversations about it. I've had other talks with people that I know in my personal life about it. But it wasn't until this week that the magnitude of the the complete breakdown was on full display breakdown in teams in terms of leadership because like i said we've we've talked about and a lot of these things happen in high schools mm -hmm. junior high schools there are instances where like you look at sandy hook right you know it took I mean, as horrific as that was, nothing's been done, really. You know, you can, you can implement a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, just to kind of pacify the situation or get the public off your back. That's the problem. This is one of those cases where it is all or nothing. There is no pacification. I'm going to tell you something. Again, this is not representative of my friend Claudel. It's not representative of ONTV. It's not representative of any other entity. These are my thoughts. And I'm talking to a very, I mean, I'm talking to you all, make no mistake about it, but this part here, this is fueled by something very personal to me. And there's a specific group that I'm directing this towards right now. But I mean it applies to everybody else, right? But for one, for a couple. I understand that they're not watching this live, but I also uh, I also understand that given the nature of this topic, this is something that they'll watch on demand. I do not take this lightly at all. 
You know, I've been a part of a lot of things over the course of my life. I've done a lot of cool things. I've done a lot of not so cool things too. But the thing about me is what you see is what you get. I don't say it unless I mean it. I'm very calculated in every aspect of my life. What I say, what I do, how I respond, how I communicate. I have wide open errors. I have wide open opportunities and a lot of um, open air space, air time. Here, my podcast network, YouTube, like I, I got air time in abundance. But it's, it goes beyond that. It's time to put the foot on the feet on the road and start doing something. Actions. Actions. This week, a situation started to arise that, like I said, hit a little bit too close to home for me. I saw how it affected people who mean the world to me. I could hear it in their voices when I couldn't see them in person. I could see it in their eyes when I did see them. And when you lock in on fundamentals like that, the fundamentals of life, what's truly important, when you really feel and see and understand people to their core, you take a more vested interest in them. Make absolute no mistake about it. I, and there's going to be a lot of other people that are going to um, join the, the proverbial team, we're fixing to make some noise. Because there has to be change. Because I cannot, under any circumstances, accept the fact, ever, that it is okay for a six-year-old boy to be scared to go to school because he's afraid he may not live to see the end of the day. Nobody. I don't give a rat's ass how old. I don't care where you come from. I don't give a crap about any of it. Nobody should have to live every single day with that fear in the back of their minds, in their hearts. Nobody wants to do anything about it because it's too hard. Nobody wants to do anything about it because it may cause resistance. The cause is resistance is because you're making moves. And the other party is trying to hold their ground. Accountability is going to be restored. One way or the other. Now, it starts with conversation. That's how most everything gets resolved. Or it should be anyway. We're going to open these lines of communication one way or the other. We are going to make a difference. I promise my kids, I promise your kids, and I promise a particular six-year-old boy. I'm going to do everything I can to start a crusade to restore some degree of protection and safety on the most fundamental layers. And those who fail, you, you failed the students, you failed our sons and our daughters, our nieces and our nephews. 
the days of you sweeping this crap under the rug are done. The days of you hiding in your cushy little offices and trying to point the fingers of blame to other people are done. It's over. It's going to take a minute, but I promise you, with everything that I am, you will feel it. You are going to feel it because you are the reason why things like this happen or are allowed to happen. It is a major contributor to what we're doing here and why these things are happening. There's an old saying, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Because here's the thing, I'm bringing the fire. Anything else you want to add to this before we put a bow on it? I just say uh, challenge. I challenge other parents and other uh, people that say they want to help and protect these kids to step up. Do what you can and whatever you can do to help get the word out. You know, get the awareness out. There's we have awareness on everything. People wearing pins and shirts and everything with all kind of other awareness. We should not only have these, it shouldn't be just memorials all the time. It should, we need to have awareness that sh shows preventative measures. Mm -hmm. Something that can help prevent this. You know, in our line of work, solidarity is a word often used, and it's often misused, really, to be honest with you. True. But the foundations of that word are going to be very much on display here. Because I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. I know Q is not the only one who feels the way he does. There's a lot of kids in a lot of schools, and with a lot of kids in a lot of schools, there's a lot of parents. There's a lot of aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas that fundamentally want their children safe. So we need to start initiating this kind of conversation that is going to provide us with these measures, these plans, these protocols to do just that. I agree. And if we save one life, that's one more life that wouldn't have been if I had just kept my damn mouth shut. I'm not keeping my mouth shut. I don't keep my mouth shut. With that, uh, we certainly appreciate you tuning in this week. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll be back here live March the 31st, 6 p.m. for the next installment of the Klaus and Q Show here on Orion Neighborhood Television.